You! Are you going to Point Lookout? I need your help. My daughter stowed away on the Duchess Gambit a few weeks ago, and I've been worried sick ever since. I haven't heard anything from her, but if you're going there, could you look for her? Please, I'll do anything to help. Oh, bless you. Her name is Nadine, and she left a couple of weeks ago. Said she wanted to see the world. Silly little thing that she is. That Tobar said he dropped her off at Point Lookout, but who knows what's happened to her since then. I don't know if you can convince my little Nadine to come back, but just give her this note from me, would you? She's about your age, and when she left, her hair was dyed bright orange. You shouldn't have any problem recognizing her. She told me she wanted to go find her fortune, but I thought it was too dangerous. I should have known better than to say that. The moment I told her she couldn't go, it was just a matter of time before she ran off. Only that it's where Tobar gets those punga fruits he sells off. Must be making a good profit off of them, too. I hear rumors the place is full of swamps and killer plants, but I don't know about all that. Please, find my daughter. Welcome, my friend. I am Tobar the Ferryman, and this fine vessel is the Duchess Gambit. We're just back from Point Lookout, but it won't be long before we set off again. Interested? You look like a woman who's been around the wastes, so I'll cut right to it. In Point Lookout, you'll find fresh-grown food, mysterious locales, and treasures as of yet unlooted. But keep your wits about you because there's more than a few exotic critters and inhospitable locals. So stay here if you're too dainty to rough it. Ah, Nadine. Sprightly little tomboy with more curiosity than common sense, that one. <laughs> I 
caused so much trouble on the trip that I probably would have thrown her overboard <laughs> if she hadn't reminded me of myself at her age. I haven't seen her since we hit land at Point Lookout, but knowing her, I'll bet she's gotten herself in plenty of trouble. Down south, this side of the bay, there's a soggy strand of beach called Point Lookout. Oh, it's got it all. Ruins of ancient pleasure towns, mysterious swamps bristling with treasure, and all practically untouched by outsiders. But if you're curious, I could offer you a ride over to that faraway land. For a nominal fee, of course. You should have seen her back in her heyday, why we traveled up and down the coast from the Commonwealth to the Broken Banks. Good times, but these days she's not fit to take out to the coast. Too many spouts ready to drown her and too many critters looking for lunch. But the Point Lookout run is good enough for now. We've got a sweet deal ferrying cargo and the occasional traveler. Looking for fame and fortune? Hoping to cultivate the delicious punga fruit? Or just looking to run away from your life on these dreary shores? All you have to do is come back to me and buy another ticket. Just be careful not to get stranded short on caps, huh? Once you got a ticket, just head into the cabin and settle in on the cot. We'll be there in no time. Whenever you're ready, just take a rest on the cot in the cabin. We'll be at Point Lookout in no time. Welcome to Point Lookout, my friend. The trip was fine. The weather's nice and damp, and everything out there looks pleasant as ever. Looks like nothing's changed since my last visit, except all that smoke I saw on the way in. Oh, nothing much, just old Calvert Mansion. Just a huge abandoned estate teeming with who knows what opportunities for profitable scavenging. You know. Nothing much. 
I know I said Point Lookout was perfect for treasure hunters, but it's a rare day when you get a beacon like that. Depends what you're looking for. If you need supplies, head to the shop over at the end of these docks. Convenient? And I get caps for referring you. If you need a place to stay, there's an old motel further into town. The beds there are still pretty soft, even if it's because they're full of lice. And if you're looking for some hunting, there's a fellow named Plick who runs a club out in the northeast. Strictly for high rollers, though. Good travels to you. Along, please. Well, hello there, young traveler. The fates had told me that I would receive a visitor today. But I'm being rude. I am Madame Panada, and this is Madame Panada's House of Wares. For all things a traveler needs, I am here to provide. Bullets! Stim packs, armor, weapons, junk. If you need it, Madame Panada has already anticipated your need and procured it months ago. Of course, I learned many tricks from my father. I knew that's why you came to me.
Fair travels, young one. to the bank and use the password Xin Chan Wen. The software is configured to recognize only our voices. I apologize that I cannot receive you in person, Agent Zhang. 
Our Norfolk contact confirms your arrival. How eager the Americans are to believe that a great mind of the people would defect. Our countrymen will herald you as a hero when your work is done. To that end, let us turn to the details of your mission. This room will be your safe house in Point Lookout. Focus initially on playing the American lapdog. Do not arouse suspicion. When it is safe, use the key you were given in Norfolk to open one of the public rental lockers on the boardwalk near the motel. You will be provided with the password you'll need to access your mission debriefing. The agreed upon payment will be paid upon extraction. Hyun, Agent Jang. The audio password for my box is Nevermore. Welcome to Bankcom. Secure teller. Vocal authorization requested. Processing. Processing. Password verified. Voice ID mismatch. Access denied. User voice unauthorized. Access denied. The audio password for my box is Processing. Nevermore. Processing. Voice ID confirmed. Access granted. Go to the bank and use the password Processing. Din Chan Processing. Wen. Processing. The software Voice is configured confirmed. to recognize only Access our voices. Granted. Agent Zhang, as you know, an important Chinese surveillance vessel was lost in American waters. Your mission is to destroy derelict submarine SSN-37-1A dash dash before the Americans can recover and analyze it. The recovery location is included in this dossier, and your cover ensures that the Americans will allow you access to their recovery operation. However, you will need an authorization code to trigger the self-destruct sequence. One of our field operatives in your area, Agent Yang, has these codes hidden in a dental capsule, but her current whereabouts are unknown. Locate and rendezvous with Agent Yang, then destroy the submarine. Report to your safe house for extraction information when the mission is complete. The will of the people protect you, Agent Yang.
these bastards off, goddammit. to help me if you want to stay alive. They've been at it all night. I think they are just about to breach the inner walls. Follow me. I'm going to go check it out. Hey, over here. from somewhere upstairs. Hurry, follow me. Go through these doors and up the stairs. Find where they are coming in and stop them. I'll be keeping an eye on the cameras down here. Hurry.
over here. Good job blocking off that hole. Hurry and get in here. Looks like they're about to breach from the east wing.
way for them to get in. Follow me. I think we're about to get hit hard. Yeah, here they come. Grab all the ammo and stim packs you need. This is gonna be a rough one. If you have any mines, now's the time to use them. They could come in through any of the boarded up doors at any second. My hero. Think you came in and rescued me right in the nick of time. Not hardly. Had it all well in hand, and I didn't even need to use the failsafe. But that would have done a real number on some of the paintings, so just as well you were here. Anyway, name's Desmond. The type that kills everyone outside of my safe room and leaves a hell of a mess to clean up. Standard type. Not worth wasting on ignorant savages like them, honestly. Just as well you came along when you did. So, tell you what I'll do. I'll share a few tips for the next time you're making a dramatic final stand. Oh, there's always a chance, certainly. But what you earn depends on how well you can follow directions. 
You're not the most incompetent waster I've ever met. I think we could put you to work and figure out what's going on here. Your reward would be considerable, since I know that's what you wasters value. Decide. I've been around for a long goddamn time. The last time I knew a bird named Nadine, I still had skin. There was some girl who came nosing around here a few weeks back, but she ran off before I could introduce myself. My story? Tell you what, kid. My story's a lot like a death claw's tongue. It's long, messy, and you don't want to get too personal with it. Understand? Suffice it to say, I have business in Point Lookout. If you help, you will be repaid for your efforts. That's all you want to fucking know. What's the difference between you and me, kid? What makes a gifted killer like yourself into a rock-hard bastard like me? The answer is training, you ignorant fuck! I've got a hundred years of experience on you, and don't you forget it. Stick by me and you'll get a master's class in doing what has to be done. They're brainless morons who worship some crazy spirit. What's to know? You need to learn to pay attention when I speak. Those mud lovers want me dead, and haven't extended the common fucking courtesy of telling me why. So, I need you to find a way into their commune, and figure out what's going through their addled little heads. Be a good pup, and old Desmond will give you a treat. And of course, who knows what riches they have for you to steal. The only reliable currency in the world. Information. You provide me with valuable info about the tribals, I pay in kind. I've got a few more tricks I can share with you, if that's not enough to get you barking. Easy peasy. Right about now, they'll be wondering what happened to their hunting party. These are people who think cutting a hole in their skull can expand their mind. They're not exactly scholars over there. Just head up to the cathedral and ask real nice. When you're in, you'll find the bastard in charge and find out what they're up to. I just need information. No need for violence. Yet. Back to business.
Well, hello there. Welcome to, uh, welcome to Haley's Hardware. Well, we have hardware. No, no, not at all. I'm just not used to people all the way out here. My usual customers, well, I usually smell them before I see them. The swamp folk, mostly. I guess they don't bother me none because I was born here. They mostly trade meat and fruit, and never any cash or goods. The mercs are good for some trade and real hardware. So if you need ammo or anything like that, I can help you out. Oh, you're thinking, no, no, it's not a family thing. I took the name of the store when I found this place a couple years ago. Truth is, I don't even remember much before that. I woke up here with a headache a couple of years ago with the shop already set up. People came in and started trading. I didn't complain. It just became a job. I found some of it. Some was here when I got here. I got some from the Mercs. And every once in a while, that weirdo with the boat comes up here and trades a few good things. Sure. That's what I'm here for. Sure as a swamp folk's head is squishy. There's not much to tell. What do you want to know?
Who lingers at the threshold of transcendence? What's this? A humble traveler, seeking the guidance of our awakened minds. Truly, this is a glorious day. You are from far away, and must be strong indeed to have traveled this far. But strength is nothing without the guidance of the enlightened mind. If you seek entry, you must be prepared to expand your consciousness. You must prove yourself worthy to transcend. You may not be so brave when you face the ritual of the Mother Seed. Stronger souls than you have attempted it and lost their minds. Venture west to the Great Bog, and within you shall find the Mother of all Punga Fruit. She stands taller than a man, and her vines guide our future. Collect her seeds and kneel before her wisdom. Only then will you be ready to enter these sacred halls. To my extraordinary safari. Shall we get you registered? Only the finest bit of sport you've ever enjoyed. Once we review the rules and see to a nominal thousand caps registration fee, of course. Ah, but of course. What would you like to know? The participants. Uh, that's you. 
assemble in the arena. Once you've made your preparations, signal me with the button inside to begin the hunt. I'll remotely release a group of ferals against which you must defend yourself. Don't worry, I'll make sure there aren't too many loose at one time. You're in for quite a treat, if I do say so myself. Not an option, I'm afraid. The thrill wouldn't be the same if you knew I'd release you at the first sign of trouble, now would it? Weapons are your own responsibility, ma'am. I'm sure you have your own preferences, after all. On with the action, huh? I've found that price keeps the riffraff out. You aren't riffraff now, are you? Have I tried to chew on your skull? Perhaps you've noticed my ability to string words into complete sentences. These ferals are nothing like myself. I'm no more a monster for providing them than you are for slaughtering them. That's the spirit, sir. The other participants are waiting, so just press the button inside to let me know when to begin. Mr. Plitch really outdone himself this time. I didn't come here to make friends. So you're number three. Well, let's get this thing going.
do hope the experience was worth every cap. Let's commemorate your first safari with a token of our friendship, shall we? This axe was uh, misplaced by one of my other patrons. She won't be needing it anymore, and it's a weapon of gruesome distinction. Enjoy it. As you please.
this is a hazardous area. For your own safety, please vacate the premises. Clearance acknowledged. Follow me for your extraction debriefing, comrade. Please step inside, agent. Extraction details can be found on the terminal inside.
No, no, don't, don't try and get up yet. You only hurt. You. Truly, the Mother Punga has bestowed her wisdom upon you, and your mind has been expanded. For a time, we feared your mind had journeyed too far from your body, and you had departed our world, but you returned to us again, at long last. Yea, though your body will bear the scars of the ritual, your soul shall be forever strengthened by the experience. You are now welcome in our cathedral. Enter, enlightened sister. It is a gift from the Earth itself, in acknowledgement of our perfect balance with nature and the higher planes. She recognizes that we seek to leave behind the corrupt physical, and she nurtures us in our quest. We espouse the expansion of the perfect mind, and the rejection of the corrupt physical. The material world is destroyed and imperfect. We seek to release our minds from their tainted cages, so as to find a better world. Leader? That would be Jackson, a man of great wisdom. He has withdrawn to his cavern of communion, the better to contemplate the unknowable. Only the righteous are trusted to know where this nexus of understanding lies. And alas, I am not so blessed. Alas, only the worthy may enter his nexus of meditation. He has not seen fit to enlighten me. Our most enlightened one divined that the fates themselves did decree the mansion must be burnt to the ground. Blessings to you on your journey. You are new, and you are welcome. I am Croatoa. I am not so new. That hill is holy. It must be cleared. Jackson told us this. Some went to fight. I stayed with Ponga. Ponga does not fight. Ponga grows where it can. Ponga knows what is important. Not here. We dream. Dream of a better world. Not falling apart like ours. And when we find a dream that makes us forget this world, we dream that we do not have to wake up. Go past the flesh. 
looks like another newbie in the tribe, and still able to string together whole sentences. Ain't you the lucky one? You still remember your name? Math? How's your memory? When I came back, there were bits in my memory where all I could recall was a white light and a jumble of voices. Crazy, huh? But you're not drooling, so you're doing okay. The rest weren't so lucky when they got their heads cut open. You sure you're feeling okay in there? You might want to check your head for a scar. We all get them after going to that bog. You know, the last part of the ritual. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back, cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. It's supposed to be the part that holds you back, but that doesn't always work out so good. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. My name's Nadine. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was all Jackson's crazy idea. I knew better than to volunteer for that suicide mission. Last time I wandered too close to that mansion, some old ghoul sicked his dogs on me. Screw that. Off at his magical thinking cave, I guess. We're not allowed to know where it is. He says we're not enlightened enough to understand. I swear that sort of stuff pisses me off so much... I thought joining would be all drugs and magic, but it's just the same crap as everywhere else. Guess that's why I trailed Jackson to his stupid mystery cave. Sure, fine. Why not? I'm planning on ditching this place anyway. If you're about to cause trouble with Jackson, all the more reason. His cave's under the cathedral, but it's hard to find. Use this key to get in through a wrecked ship down at the sea cliffs to the east. When you find that old idiot, tell him thanks for all the punk I could steal. Look, it's not that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just, I came out here to find a fortune, to make my mark to be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back eventually, just not quite yet. You're a lucky one, and it probably didn't do any permanent damage. Scar will heal up on its own, and you'll be good as new. Of course, you'll still be missing a chunk of brain, but it looks like you didn't need that bit anyway. Now hold still, and I'll see if I can help you look like your old self again. It's all a little fuzzy for me, but I've got a hunch. I'm going to go do some snooping, see what I can figure out. Meet me by the riverboat in a day or so, and maybe I'll have something for you. What is this, a date? You start making a move, and it's stabbing time. What? There's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Yeah, enough, Gavin. Let's move.
You infiltrated those tribals yet? Nice work. As if sneaking into a compound of morons is any kind of work. So, why haven't you tracked down their leader and grilled him for info? Don't waste your time reporting back. Go find him and figure out what he wants with this place, you moron. Fellow seeker of the higher planes, perhaps. What brings you here? What splendid news! At last, the Holy Land is empty of his disruptive aura, and the astral plane is open to us all. Oh, but the transcendent master will want to hear of this, and as the returning champion, it is your right and honor to tell him yourself. After all, 
It is he who makes all true decisions about the spiritual growth of our tribe, including the decision to cleanse the mansion. It is very rare that others are permitted to commune with the Master. Many are too foolish to understand the great truths of his higher mind. But I sense in you a great potential. Perhaps you have what is needed to accept his teachings and grow from his wisdom. He manifests here, high on a ledge in the great sea caves well. Seek him out, and all shall be revealed. We take no pleasure in violence. Our goal was merely to remove the ghoul. His presence is an offense to the Transcendent Master's astral dominion. I cannot claim to understand the exact reasons that the mansion's resident caused such disruption, however. To understand fully, ask the Master. I know it may seem that I am a brave shepherd to my flock, but the truth is far more humble. I am nothing more than the largest fish in our school, as we swim through the astral seas, exploring, learning, and becoming one. But we are not swimming aimlessly. No, we have a beacon. The Shining Mind speaks to me in my meditations, and guides us always. We are a family of dreamers, a band of astral explorers, and a church of the mind. In time, we will be free of the horrors of the base physical world. We will play amongst the pure thoughts of the universe. Yes, commune with him while I see to my tribe. There is much to be done.
I knew it. I knew that little bastard was behind all this. After all these years, he stuck his head out, and this is my chance to cut it off. Figuratively speaking, of course. Calvert is my old rival. Centuries we've played this game. I knew he'd be stupid enough to hide so close to his family home. It's not a matter of hate. It's a matter of destiny. He is my enemy, and I do not suffer any bastard who opposes me to live. I knew he was here, and it is my intent to find him, and call down a righteous fucking hammer on his head. Figurative, I mean. His head. Him. I should have known. My old rival, so close to his family home. Only he would be so stupid. He was once a man, Professor Calvert. The Calverts owned half of Maryland, back when there was a Maryland to own. Members of the Calvert family were influential all over the world. They practically owned a deed to the U.S. government. In their best days, there were no less than three Calvert family senators, seven members of the House, and two governors. They even had a top candidate for president, until that scandal with the dog forced them to drop out of the race. I was particularly proud of that one. Of course I fucking want you to do something else. You don't expect me to trot around this mud hole myself, do you? Nothing but the best for people who stay in my good graces. Now, you ready to stop whining and listen? So, those halfwits are getting messages from the professor, right? So he's off somewhere broadcasting to them. But without those buggers to do things for him, he can't do much for himself. So, we cut off his ability to talk to them, and he'll need to try harder. Maybe then I can find this squishy little worm and finish him off for good. If I know the professor, he's using a high-frequency cognitive sign broadcast. I have the perfect device to jam up that little worm's talk box. All you need to do is take it to the highest point around and install it. Easy, right? Right. Attach it to the bottom car, then turn it on and spin the jammer to the top. No fucking problem. I'll watch from here and turn it on. Then we'll see where our little professor is. Now, go! It is I, Professor Calvert. Don't bother looking around. I am in your mind. But aren't you Desmond's faithful little employee? Coming to gum up my work, are we? Well, I have a better idea. How about instead of playing his game, you destroy that nasty little device? Deposit it in the nearby trash compactor and we will never have to worry about it again. I assure you that the gratitude of Professor Calvert is worth a great deal more than that of a washed-up old limey. It is Oh, it is good to see you well, young traveler. And what brings you to Madame Panada's? All of Madame Panada's wares are top quality.
Of course. I learned many tricks from my father. Take. You fool! What have you done? You will pay for this! Pay! No one betrays me! You understand? You will suffer for this! Return to dust! You will... Fool! Pay for this! Coming for you! Keep your distance. What are you doing in my house? You're in Black Hall Manor. This isn't a tourist attraction. I appreciate your good taste. Come, let's talk. Good, good. People should be able to sit and have a conversation. Especially in times like these. Civil discourse. 
the greatest of our lost arts. Wouldn't you agree? I'm glad you think so. Conversation is but one of the virtues that separate us from cretins like those swamp folk. Swamp folk who, I should mention, absconded with a book, a precious family heirloom. I wanted to ask you, friend, will you get it back? Cash, plain and simple. Return with the book, and I'll pay you a thousand caps, no questions asked. Good. The fools who stole it believe it has powers, so the thing is probably well guarded. There's a ritual site east of the boardwalk, in the basement of a ruined house. I think you'll find it there. Bring it back to me, and be paid. I suppose larceny isn't enough reason to hate. They think the book has a kind of occult power. Superstition and nonsense, of course. No, not them. That lot wants for brains. But they're at least somewhat civilized. The swamp folk have no creed, no morals. You must be new here if you don't know the answer to that by now. Yes, they're dangerous. They shoot at, smash, or try to eat anything that isn't them. And half the time they shoot at each other. They may have been men once, but no more. What? I don't suppose there's any harm indulging you. What interests you? Hundreds of years, and still standing strong. You're within a fine example of Victorian architecture, my friend. Just as much as it's named after us, I suppose. We took the Black Hall name when we arrived on these shores. Generations before the Great War, we do well to remember history, particularly in this dark time. Don't be daft. You agreed to retrieve my book. With more haste than this, I would have thought. You need to head to the ritual site east of the boardwalk and expect a fight. Don't get yourself killed. Wait a moment. I need to know. Has Obadiah sent you in search of a book? I thought as much. Listen to me very carefully, child. You mustn't bring it to him. That book is known as the Krivbekne, and it's a thing of evil purpose. Yes, the Krivbekne. The Blackhall family has a long, evil history with the book. It was lost to them long ago, but it's found a way back to Point Lookout, and Obadiah seeks to reclaim it. Obadiah's no better than the heathens he's asked you to steal it from. He believes he can use it to control them, and God knows what else. There's a way to destroy that damned thing. I intend to do just that. I can't promise you money, but I have some medical supplies I can share. Please, it would be a good thing you do. I ask no more. You can find me at my tent on the beach, south of Black Hall. God bless your path, child.
There you are! They attacked while I slept. I... I don't expect to survive. I only pray that... <coughs> that you haven't taken that book to Obadiah. You must take up my mission. There is one way to utterly destroy the Krivetne. But you must take a pilgrimage far north of Point Lookout in the Capital Wasteland. Seek a place called Dunwich. Within is an obelisk itself, a, a wicked thing. It'll consume the book. You need only press the book to its surface. May God shed his blessings upon you, child. Make haste for Dunwich. My God, I am sorry for all my sins with all my heart in choosing to do wrong and failing to do good. I have sinned against you, whom I sh should.
it is... And what is it you would like to purchase? Of course, I learned many tricks from my father. to fucking do it himself, so he tried to blow me up. Me? Well, this ends today. Desmond Lockhart will finally win out. I know where he is. He overplayed his hand this time. You and me are going to walk in there and end this. Well, aren't you a fucking softy? But Calvert is here. He's got a lab under the lighthouse, the little fuck. Right under my nose the whole time. I found it when he boosted his signal to try to get through the jamming. When he sent those tribals to kill my poor pups. He's down there, hiding behind robots and machines, sucking life. Pathetic. He dies now. I suggest you hurry your pretty self up. I'm sure the bastard's got some sort of escape plan. ready to go yet. At last, our game is ending. When great men rise, they will clash. It's inevitable. Calvert and I are both men of great power. But today, our rivalry ends. Now let's go.
Robots. Bloody figures.
this unpleasantness. You deserve that. This way. The world is rid of that sniveling, disgusting, arrogant brain. Think of it. Everything he learned, everything he had, it's all here, and it's all mine. Mine! Moron, you cannot possibly comprehend what this is worth. I've been battling with Calvert for over 200 years, and now at last, I am the victor. And now... 
two hundred years of technology, knowledge, and research that he stole from me. Every time he beat me, it doesn't matter now. You're free to take whatever you find in this disgusting place. What I came for is of no interest to you. Enjoy your spoils. I don't think our paths will ever cross again. And I think we can both thank Christ and say hallelujah for that. I wasn't aware that we had anything else to say to each other. I'm pulling all the data that I can from Calvert's computers. Everything the little bastard gathered is here. And then, when I'm done, I'll leave this place to sink into the sea. Now that we're rid of Calvert, I'll be heading north to pursue my next rival. There are only a few of us left now. The great game goes on. Sort of a... Uh, what's a word you'd understand? Microcosm? Yeah. It's a microcosm for the old world. Can I go back to work now? Just in time. Found out who went rooting around in our skulls, and you'll never guess who it was. As a totally unrelated hint, I'm in charge of his boat now. Yeah, looks like it. When the tribals would send someone to the swamp, he'd be waiting around to nab them when the Pungasides gassed him. He'd do his amateur surgery for the tribals, let us wander back, all in exchange for punga fruit to trade. <laughs> Sweet little deal he had going on. Anyway, I figured you'd want a shot at some revenge, so I put him under citizen's arrest, sorta. Yeah, he seemed nice enough, didn't he? I wouldn't have figured it out if I hadn't snuck into his engine room while waiting for you. From the look of it, he kept every bit of gray matter he cut out, and he had quite a collection. You can take a look if your stomach's up to it. And while you're in there, feel free to give Tobar my love. Preferably with the sharp end of a hot knife. First off, I'm claiming this boat. 
I put Tobar down, so it's mine. Them's the rules of the ocean. So that leaves me with a boat, a load of punga, and a wicked scar. Damn, if I haven't earned that adventure I came out looking for. Think I'll take over running this ship. I can travel as I like and always head back to the wasteland to see Mom. Not a bad way to live, huh? Of course, you can always ride for free. Now that I've got this sweet boat, I guess I could head back home. For a while, anyway. Just wait till Mom sees the haul I'm bringing home. Yeah, enough gabbing. Let's move. Well, if it isn't my favorite traveler, and oh, what a trip you were on. Why, when you were under, you should have heard some of the things that came out of your mouth. But I suppose you're more interested in what came out of your head, aren't you? Why do we do anything? You travel the world, kill people, take trophies that interest you, and move on. I'm much the same. The only difference is that my trophies are somewhat more medical in nature. Oh, and to be honest, I probably kill fewer people than you do. But I suppose it's time that came to an end. One way or another. There you are. We having fun yet? We having fun yet? Well, there's not much to say.
raiders told spook stories about zombies in the ruins. Never saw anything like that where I come from. Lord help me. They're real. Not quite what Thor said, but close. These things look... I think they really used to be people.
Something troubling you, my friend? I owe you no less than my life. How could I refuse? and see only the target, the bullets fly right where I want them to go. You're not quite as worthless as you look. Remember, if you overthink combat... Heavy raider country, so things could get into Brotherhood is at your service. I see. Ah, oh, yes. Is there something you wish to discuss? Here. I trust you are well. I'm here for your progress report on the modified recon armor. Ah, you're a bit early today, sir. Regardless, I'm... 